Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And today I have a video that is going to be all about time management and scheduling your time um, and how you do it. I am a mother of two children. I own a business and I am a wife, a daughter, a friend, all of the above. And it's really sometimes quite difficult to balance everything, my kids' schedule, my schedule, and everyone else's schedules around me. And everybody is guaranteed 24 hours of time. We all have the same amount of time, but how I plan it is essential. And a lot of people say to me, I don't know how you do it, but my secret is not that difficult. And hopefully some of these tips will help you. I am doing this with other collaborators and I will have links to their videos and maybe you can get some pointers if depending on if you're an extremely busy person, you're in school or you own a business or whatnot. Hopefully these tips will help you and to make you better at planning your day, um, planning your life, planning and planning some type of schedule that makes sense for you and for others. Before we you. go ahead and dive into my planner, I just want to share a few tips with you. I think the most important thing when you plan your day or plan your week is to remember to make time that you're able to breathe. Make sure that you plan those things in your schedule to make sure you have downtime for yourself because no matter what you're doing in life, you do need that time to kind of get off the grid and do things that matter to you, that are important to you. If it's reading or watching your favorite program or taking a long bubble bath. The next thing I want you to remember is to remember that we all have 24 hours of time and don't worry so much about what you have to do. Worry about what you want to do and what matters the most to you. So when you look at your day, look at the top three or top thing, five things that matter to you. If it's being a part of your children's daily life, put that at the top of your list. If returning a phone call from a friend you haven't spoke to in months, that might be at the top of your priority list. Or cleaning out your refrigerator might be at the top of your priority list. Or doing that presentation for work or for school. So you need to decide what are the most important things that you want to make the best also, of your time. Also, make sure that you're fully aware of where you spend your time. Are you spending a lot of your time on social media and realizing, you know, crap, I just spent two hours on social media and I really wanted to dive into this new book. So you might have to do like a time journal to kind of document where you're spending your time. Are you spending most of your time waiting in long lines at grocery stores? Maybe that's a time that you can use for reading your book. Um, also, you want to write down everything that you do do and that are that is important to you to put things in perspective. Maybe there's a thing that's reoccurring that you need to make a more of a priority. I of. always try to start my day with the most important thing that needs to get done. Obviously, your basic needs when you wake up, go to the bathroom, drink a cup of coffee. If you have children, you start preparing their breakfast. But the thing that you need to tackle the most important of the day, I like to do first. For example, when I schedule doctor's appointments and dentist appointments, those are very important appointments. I try to do those first in the day so I get them over so I have the rest of the day to focus on the second most important, third, fourth, and fifth, and then be able to have more time to enjoy instead of it lingering over me. If there's an important email that needs to be taken care of, or if there's an important phone call, or something that you need to do for your job or for your home, I do those things at the beginning of the day so at the end of the night when I'm exhausted and my mind is all over the place, I'm not focusing on it. It's done, it's off my chest, and the stress is gone. Finally, before we dive into my calendar and my to-do list is I use both. I use a to-do list and I always try to label the things that need to take the most, that need to be done the most importantly all the way down to the least important. And whatever doesn't get done, it gets taken over to the next day. I use the calendar so if there's bigger projects or bigger tasks, I break it down into sections so then I can see the big picture of my final results. I also use a calendar and I plan everything that needs to be done that I want to accomplish. For example, if I want to pray and meditate that day, I put that in my calendar. If I want to meal plan that day, I put that in my calendar. If I want to spend quality time with my children, I even write that down. I like to do that because it helps my brain and my mind think about those things and find and also to um, make sure that I'm prioritizing my priorities. So let's go ahead and take a peek inside my calendar and see what you think and right, let me so know. So here is my planner. It's nothing too fancy. I've had this for years. Um, it zips up. It's black. 
and it's very simple. I don't even know where I got it, to be honest with you. I think I picked it up at like Walmart or Target or some type of office supply store, and I've had it for years. I probably had this thing for about 15 years, and it's in pretty good shape. It's not worn or anything like that. So when you open it up, it's got the three ring binder and then it has a pen holder. There's a spot right here to put um, credit cards and information like that. And then in the front of it, it's got all my information as far as like if it's lost or found, um, you have my address and then it has some basic information that I'm not going to share, but mostly we're here for how to stay organized and how I do it. So here is um, next week. This is November 14th through the 20th. I use these pages a lot. These are a weekly page at a glance. I document a lot of information on here. It gives me the big picture of what I um, am doing for the week. And then if you notice right here, there's a bunch of tabs that have the days of the month. And then the, I have an address book in the back and some other little things. Let me see. Address book. And I have a notes page where I do a lot of brainstorming and things like that. I also keep a lot of personal information, so I'm not going to share that. I do use stickers. I do, I'm not like all those other crazy people out there that use like tons and tons. But I pick these up, I believe, at one of the craft stores, either Michael's or whatnot, just to kind of jazz it up. Sometimes I'll put some seasonal stickers on my pages. Nothing too spectacular. Um, so it just depends on how I feel. Sometimes they have labels and things like that. If I want something to stick out or take precedence, I will fill out stickers. Okay, so I am going to use stickers for the purpose of this video. I don't always use stickers, and like I said, I'm not like a crazy sticker freak, but the stickers I chose that I'm going to use are these ones that, like I said, I got from like either Joann's or Michael's, I can't remember, and then I have some of these that I had um, in my sticker collection. They're autumn. They look kind of November-ish, so I'm going to use these to plan out my weekend the rest of the month. All right, so the next thing, this is kind of my week that's already been happening and going on. I jot down everything that I do throughout the week from my work commitments to my children's commitments. Um, let's see, work, children, if I'm going to be preparing dinner that night. Sometimes I don't always prepare dinner. My kids will eat at grandma's or whatnot. If there's any animal commitments, like my dog Thor has an appointment at 1.30 on Friday for a checkup. My daughter and I have a commitment to go see um, a performance on Friday evening. So I write all that down. I even include prayer time and things of that nature. Now, I like doing this and some people like checking things off. Some people like crossing things off. However it works for you. When I complete something or I've processed something, I like to go ahead and highlight it and then I know it's done and whatever spaces are unhighlighted are the things that I'm either working on or haven't happened. When you go over to my month, um, it's a little bit different. I already have days of the week crossed off and I cross them off as the month progresses. And then if I'm working on tasks and I want to break it up into chunks, I will write that over here in the notes section. So like if I have filming things I want to film, I might say, you know, Thanksgiving fall tour and I have to remember to do a thumbnail. That's something that I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to edit the video and film the video. So I'm going to have to spend one day just on filming, one day on the thumbnail, one day on editing. I might have to prep the video as far as like what I want to include in the video, if, the, if it's video ready or whatnot. So I might have to do that. If I'm doing stuff for work, like such as a dance, like a solo or whatnot, I might have to finish choreography. I might want to do choreography for 16 counts or 24. These are just examples that I'm jotting down. And then once the dances are done, I might say I want to clean the first 30 seconds of the dance, depending on what I want to do. If it's a household commitment, um, as far as my house, I might want to get my, um, right now we're focusing on trying to get everything winterized and ready for our home um, because we only got like three more weeks and then it's going to start getting brutally cold here with snow, ice and things like that. So I might need to rake leaves, prepare my pots. Um, I might have to winterize the camper. I mean, I'm just taking these. So like I was saying, um, I might have to winterize my camper or something like that, and that might be a goal or something I need to accomplish and break down week by week. And that would go over to my weekly section that I would have over here and plan it in the weeks. And I kind of jot that down. So 
Um, let me go over to that. These are old pages. So like, for example, um, boy, oh boy, I can't even find where I was left off at. Um, so right here. So like if I know I'm not going to have any time to winterize the camper, I will add it to this week or add it to the following week and so forth. Now, as far as meal planning, I have my meals. I do that once a month. I meal plan and I have a completely different video for that. So make sure you check that out. And that kind of will help you how I figure out meal planning. I used to jot everything down under my monthly saying when we ate what, but I decided not to do that. And that's in my completely separate notebook. And I kind of pick and choose. I look at the week, what weeks are busier than others, and that determines what I eat. Like, for example, I don't even know what we're going to eat tomorrow, but I'll prepare it the evening before, know what I'm going to eat, or in that morning, and then we know what we're going to eat for that evening. I look at that list. But if you want to see full details on that, go check out my YouTube video on that. So pretty much in a nutshell, this is how I get organized for the week. This is how I stay organized. This is how I stay on task and all that jazz. Um, it's really simple. There's nothing too extravagant about it. Um, if you love to see organizational videos, let me know. I will keep doing them. If you want more tips or anything or something more in depth, let me know and hopefully I can help you out with that. And remember to hit subscribe if you don't want to miss any videos from me. And remember to give me a thumbs up and I'll talk to you guys real soon.